September. So you're doing a good job right now putting pressure on Mike Rogers. But there are a lot of other men and women that represent you here in Michigan that you've got to focus on too. And don't stop just here in August. You've got to come with us. Come to Washington because that's what's going to be going on in September. We the people are going to be putting incredible pressure on this Congress as in the middle of September they start receiving this poor report, the Petraeus report report that's already being now known as the White House report because it's being drafted in the White House. Petraeus and Crocker are not writing their independent version of what's going on there. They are the political hacks of the Bush administration. And it breaks my heart to say that because General Petraeus, when he was sitting in his confirmation hearing, and I was in that hearing in front of the Senate Armed Forces Committee, he swore that he would tell the truth to the Congress and to the American people. And already we're seeing that the White House is writing the report. Petraeus is not going to have a chance to tell the truth. But you know, we've got sergeants, we've got, we've got sergeants, we've got lieutenants that are telling the truth. Did you see the op-ed that came out in the New York Times last week where eight sergeants of the 82nd Airborne Division said, this war is wrong, we need to get out of here. Militarily it makes no sense. The sergeants are telling us what to do. The sergeants are doing it. Retired generals are doing it. Of course, they didn't have the bravery to say it while they were on active duty or resign in protest over a war they knew was going to be terrible for America, terrible for the military, and a disaster on the people of Iraq. They didn't have the nerve then to do it, but, okay, give them a little credit. Now that they've retired and they're getting their pensions, yes, they are saying out. They're speaking out. General Newbold of the, of the Marine Corps, General Batiste, General Easton of the Army, are now saying, militarily, this thing it was unwinnable from the beginning. Unwinnable. And what was winning anyway? The invasion and occupation of an oil-rich Muslim country that had done nothing to the United States. That is a war of aggression. That is a war crime. What we're talking about are war crimes, criminal activity by the United States of America on another country. War crimes that are being committed by the senior leadership of our country. Not only the aggression, the aggressive war, the war of aggression against Iraq, but also things that have come out of that. Torture. Torture now that has been codified as a law, a permitted act in the United States of America through the Military Commissions Act. We now torture and people can get away with it because in that Military Commissions Act it said if you did this before December 2005, you're free. We aren't going to prosecute you. And now we're changing the name of what torture really is. We're just calling it enhanced interrogation techniques. Well, if those were, the techniques were used on you and I, we would be screaming bloody murder. Torture! Torture! America is torturing! That's another reason we have to hold this administration accountable. And people might, like, like Mike Rogers have voted for that. We've got to hold Mike Rogers accountable for eavesdropping. Oh my goodness, the administration was eavesdropping on us, violating domestic law since 2001. And then now what happens? Here in, in June of 2007, the U.S. Congress, led by the Democrats now, have passed an eavesdropping law that gives the permission to the Bush administration to go ahead and eavesdrop on us. We not only have to hold Mike Rogers accountable, we've got to hold those Democrats accountable for what they have done to us too. There are 
very few people in our Congress that are serving us the people. Very, very few of them. If you look what's going on, we are finding a Democratic Party that is saying the, Democrat, the elections of 08 are more important than ending the, the war in Iraq. We're having Democrats that are saying it is more important to win in 08 than hold accountable an administration that has conducted criminal activities. A, a Democratic Party that has joined the Republicans that says no, no accountability for George Bush, for Dick Cheney, for Abelter Gonzalez, for these people that have, that have broken the law. We are having a Congress that is telling us, the people, that we, we the Congress, are shredding your Constitution. We are taking off the table parts of your Constitution. Impeachment? No! Speaker of the House, Pelosi, your own congressman, John Conyer, says you can't have your Constitution. We've got so much work to do on the Republicans and the Democrats to hold these people accountable. We want to. We have got to hold everybody accountable. And those in the Democratic Party that don't want to hold the Republicans accountable, they're just as much a part of the problem as the re Republicans that started this whole mess. So we've got a lot to do. Supporting the troops and ending the war is a part of it, but there's a lot, lot more to do. September is a critical, critical month for us. This is where another war funding possibly could take place unless we the people are out there in numbers so strong that the Congress is scared of us. They are saying, oh God, they're not sheep anymore. <laughs> they are becoming little wolves that are coming after us the Congress and us the administration. The sheep have turned into wolves. They're turning on their own Congress and saying to the Congress, if you don't pass what we want, which is the end of the war, that we elected you to do, we're going to take a little chunk out of your behind. We're going to make sure that when you come up for election next year that we remember that. Remember that you're killing over 100 Americans every single month. That you are killing over 4,000 Iraqis every single month. That you agreed to the surge. The surge that started out at 20,000 people that sell up to 40,000 people. A surge now that has captured, detained, 25,000 more Iraqis, putting them in jail, detention, average time in detention for an Iraqi, no trial, no charges, over a year. We've got something to do here. We've got to close Guantanamo. We've got to give trials to people that have charges against them. Let's sort it out. Right now, five years, five and a half years after Guantanamo opened, one person out of 770 people in Guantanamo has been charged and convicted. One out of 770. There are still 380 still in Guantanamo. What are they doing there? Why don't they, why don't they charge them if they've got the goods on them? Why don't they charge them? These are things we've got to force that Congress to do. So we've got a lot of work to do. We can do it. The people are behind this. Seventy percent of them say in this war, stop all of this criminal activity by our government. So now it's up to us. So I ask you, please continue your work right here in the month of August right here in Michigan. And then if you've got a frequent flyer point, if you've got a Greyhound bus ticket, come to Washington. We need you there. On the 15th of, of September is a big march. On the 29th is a big march. On the 19th is the Iraq moratorium. We've got all sorts of things that Americans have to show our Congress and the administration that we mean business and we want this war ended now. Bring the troops home. Troops home now. Troops home.